Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make your very own dress form. I've seen a few tutorials over the years for how to make a duct tape dress form, but normally it's left with the duct tape as the outer layer. And I thought how much better it would be if it wasn't just practical, but it was also ornamental. So I've made a kind of fancy version of the dress form, which has a decoupaged outer layer. So you might be thinking, why would you want to be making a dress form? Well, dress forms are very useful if you like to make your own clothes because you just put the clothing onto the dress form and you can see from all angles how that garment fits. Now, the dress form that you make will obviously be completely personal to you and will be exactly your shape. So when you're making clothes, you can simply try them on the dress form to see how they fit and make any necessary alterations. This is a big advantage over trying on the clothes yourself because you can see from all angles how it fits, you can make alterations easily and you don't have to go through the faff of changing into the clothing every time you want to test the fit. I would estimate that this project probably took me a full weekend and cost me between 50 and 60 pounds. I had some of the crafting materials already, but a large chunk of that price is because of the lamp stand, which I bought off eBay and then revamped. Okay, so before I get stuck into the instructions, I'm going to go through everything I needed to make this dress form. The main bulk of the shape was made from duct tape. I ended up using a full roll of super heavy duty silver duct tape which was 5 centimetres wide and 50 metres long. The reason I use the heavy duty stuff is because it holds the shape better. You will need a t-shirt that you don't mind cutting up. I made the mistake of using a t-shirt that had baggy sleeves and this made the armholes of the finished dress form a bit too big. So I would definitely suggest using a t-shirt that is close fitting on all areas. I would also recommend that you use a t-shirt that is quite long, or at least covers your hips. If you don't have a suitable t-shirt, you can use a close-fitting camisole or vest and fill in the gaps using cling film or sarin wrap. So that's another thing you need, cling film. The purpose of the cling film is to basically stop the duct tape from sticking to your clothing or your skin. So you can use it in any areas where the t-shirt does not cover you, but you want to include that area in the dress form. For instance, you can wrap the cling film carefully around your neck or around your hips and bum if the t-shirt doesn't cover those areas already. I'll go through this a little bit later. You will also need a stand. I paid £15 for an old wooden lamp stand on eBay. But if you don't want to do that, there are other options. You can use any kind of pre-made stand, for instance, a microphone stand, or you can make your own stand using a combination of cardboard tube, a curtain pole, PVC pipe, dowel, sheets of wood, whatever you want, basically. Just make sure it's sturdy. Because I revamped my lamp stand, I needed some extra equipment and materials. These included wood scrapers for removing the paint, sandpaper, masking tape and spray paint. I used a cream coloured chalk paint and then sealed it with a clear sealer spray. If you're going to be doing any spray painting or woodwork, you're also going to need some safety equipment, such as good ventilation, a breathing mask, and safety specs. The only other bit of woodwork I did in this project was to make the piece that went in the neck of the dress form. I made it out of an old offcut of chipboard and I also used some wooden dowel, a mini Craig jig, a saw, some clamps, a drill and some wood glue. These are mostly things that I already had in my little workshop but obviously if you don't have any of these things, it might be better to use an alternative. For instance, stiff cardboard or even a wooden hanger. 
So don't worry if you have no woodworking skill or equipment because you can go down a non-woodworking route. Another main component of the dress form is stuffing. I ended up using about 1.5 kilograms of polyester cushion stuffing, plus a little bit out of an old pillow. You can buy bags of stuffing, or you can use stuffing from any old pillows or toys or even old clothes. I've even seen people use expanding foam inside the dress form. You will also need some thin and stiff cardboard. I reused some old packaging, but you could use something like grey board. And this is going to be used for covering the open areas of the t-shirt. You'll also need some scissors. Preferably some scissors you don't mind getting gunged up with the duct tape. As well as some good scissors. A sharpie pen and a normal pen or pencil. And a cheap paintbrush. For the decoupage on the outside of the dress form, I used some old sewing patterns. You can pick up these very cheaply on eBay. I think I paid about £3 for four sewing patterns that were used or just very old. Although one thing I would recommend is to check that the sewing patterns are all the same colour before you start. There are lots of glues that you can use for the decoupage, but Mod Podge glues are particularly good. I used Mod Podge Furniture Gloss Finish and I ended up using most of the 473 milliliter pot. And finally, I also used a PVA sealant called PVA Bond. And this was something I used on top of the duct tape before I decoupaged. But to be honest, I don't think it made much difference at all. So you can completely ignore that step if you wish. Okay, so that's everything you need. So let's get on with making it. The first stage of making my dress form involved me revamping the lamp stand. Because I bought an old stand that had chipped paint and cracks, I had to first use some scrapers to scrape off all the old paint. This did take some time and of course I made sure I had good ventilation and was wearing a breathing mask throughout. Once I'd done that, I used sandpaper all over to get a smooth finish and then I wiped the stand clean. I put masking tape on the areas that I didn't want paint to get on. For instance, the threads where the different parts screw together. And then I simply spray painted all over. Once the first coat of paint was dry, I sanded it, wiped off the dust, and then did another coat of the spray paint. I used a chalky finish furniture paint in a cream color. However, I wouldn't recommend using the chalky finish paint because even when the paint is dry, if you touch it, the colour comes off on your hand. So I then had to spray a clear protective coating over the top of the paint. Once that was dry, the stand was finished. The next stage was forming a mould of my torso using duct tape. You will need some duct tape, some scissors and a friendly helper for this step. First, you need to put on your close-fitting t-shirt. Make sure that any other clothing that you are wearing is nice and thin. If there are any areas of your body that you want to include in the dress form shape that aren't currently covered with a t-shirt, you now have to wrap those areas in cling film or saran wrap. These areas could include the top of your arms, your hips and bum, or your neck. I would definitely only recommend wrapping the cling film around yourself at the last minute. So for instance, if you're adding the neck area into your dress form, then only wrap the cling film around your neck as the last step. Because cling film blocks your pores and stops your skin from breathing. So, especially if it's a hot day, you want to be doing this step for the minimum amount of time. Other safety tips include not wrapping the duct tape or the cling film too tightly around your body. Make sure that when your friend wraps the duct tape around you, that you breathe in before that happens. This will help to prevent the duct tape from being too tight. You want the tape to be snug, but you do not want it to restrict your breathing at all. And also it's probably better you do this on a cool day rather than a warm day. 
One more tip is about your posture. Make sure you stand up straight during the taping, but also make sure you're in a relaxed, normal position. Okay, so basically your friend is going to wrap the duct tape all around your torso. However, it's best to do this in an ordered fashion. That way, you're more likely to get an accurate and close fitting result. The first thing you should do is wrap a piece of duct tape around the body, just under the chest. The next step is to add shoulder straps and a kind of X shape that goes down over the center of the chest and over the shoulders onto your back. Then it's just a case of filling in the area above the under bust line. So you add horizontal strips of tape above the chest and across the back and shoulder area. Plus make sure you don't miss out the underarm area and around the very top of the arms. You want to use shorter lengths of duct tape when you get to a curved area. So on the bust itself, make sure that you use only short strips of duct tape. The idea is to follow the curves as accurately and as closely as possible. Next, you wrap one piece of duct tape around your waist, then one piece around your hips, and also a piece around the widest part of your body. Then you simply fill the rest of the areas of the t-shirt in until you've covered all the areas you want to include in the dress form. If you want to have useful lines on your finished dress form, for instance, the center line, the waistline, the hips line, etc. Then now is the time to get a Sharpie and mark those lines on the tape. You can then transfer these to the finished dress form at the end. I didn't do this, but it would have been useful for dressmaking. Once you've added all the tape that you want to add, now is the time for your friend to cut the t-shirt at the back. Simply cut up the center of the t-shirt from bottom to top and carefully remove the tape and t-shirt combination. You should now have something like this. You now need to tape up the back of the t-shirt so that it's exactly the same as it was before you cut it. And also add any tape in areas where you think reinforcement is needed. I completely forgot to tape over the top of my arms. So I added some tape in those areas. And I also added short strips of duct tape at the neck area, just for reinforcement. Having clearly defined and reinforced openings at the neck and armholes will help you later on. You may notice that I have a pillow in the dress form at this point, and that's because it just made it a bit more easy to work with because it wasn't so flat and flimsy. The next thing you need to do is cut out a couple of pieces of stiff cardboard to cover the armholes. I just guesstimated the size and shape and kept altering it until it fit well. And then I made an identical one for the other side. You want the pieces of cardboard to fit very snugly in the armholes. And if anything, they should be slightly bigger than the openings. Then you just need to tape these card pieces into place so that they are covered with duct tape and are secure. The next step is to make and add the neck and shoulder support. This is an important part because this section will be resting on the stand that you choose to use. So it has to be fairly strong. It also adds to the structure and helps support the shoulders. I've seen people use stiff cardboard for this or even a wooden hanger. But if you have some basic woodworking equipment, I would recommend making a wooden support just because that's the strongest and most supportive option. The basic idea is just to cut out a piece of wood that is just slightly bigger than the neck hole. 
so that it sits securely inside. And it's also a good idea to support the shoulders as well with rods or dowels. For mine, I first drew a template out on cardboard, cut it out and tested it inside the neck hole of the dress form until I was happy with the size and shape. I then cut that shape out of an off cut of chipboard that I already had. I used a bandsaw to cut it out, but obviously a handsaw would also work. I measured the angle of the shoulders in relation to the neck on the dress form, and then I drilled a hole at this angle on each side of the piece of chipboard. I drilled these holes using an electric drill and a mini Craig jig. I used a 10mm drill bit, as this was almost the same size as the wooden dowel that I'm going to be putting into the holes. If anything, it's best to make the hole slightly too small and too big. I had to sand down the ends of the dowel a little bit to fit them in the holes snugly. The way I've positioned the dowel into the chipboard means that the dowel will sit under the highest parts of the dress form, i.e. along the shoulder seams. These are the best places to add dowels or rods to support the shoulders. Once the glue was dry, this piece was inserted into the dress form. And now we're on to the next stage, which is where we add stuffing to the dress form. I used over one and a half kilograms of stuffing for my form, so it does take a lot to fill it up. All you do is push the stuffing into the form until it's nearly full. Really try your best to get the stuffing into all the crevices and curves and really stuff it tightly. Also make sure that the dress form isn't lumpy. The idea is to make the dress form as solid as you can so that it won't collapse later on. The danger of collapsing is lessened because I'm going to be decoupaging on the outside. So this will stiffen the outside and help prevent collapse. However, if you're not going to decoupage, or you just want to make sure it definitely won't collapse, then I've seen people add expanding foam into certain areas of their dress form. And I've also seen people glue a bra into the chest area of the dress form, just to add more support. Really, the area that is prone to collapsing is the bust area, so make sure you make that as solid as possible. I then cut out a piece of stiff cardboard to fit the bottom of the form and I cut out a hole in the centre for where my stand is going to go. You want to stuff the form as much as you can but you won't be able to do it completely at this stage. The next stage is to first put the oval of card onto the stand and then you push your dress form onto the stand. Make sure the dress form sits straight and upright. The chipboard section that I made sits on top of the stand, so it's very solidly supported. It also allowed me to spin the dress form on the stand, which will prove very handy. Once the form is sitting how you want it to sit on the stand, you can then finish stuffing it. So what I did was first tape the cardboard piece to the base of the form, making sure that I only attached it with a few pieces of duct tape, leaving big gaps around the outside edge. I could then still add stuffing through the gaps in the tape until the form was completely full. Make sure the form is how you like it and as solid as possible before taping up the base of the form completely. Now is the time to make any final alterations to the dress form. I noticed that the card that I cut for the base of the dress form was a bit wide and the dress form was therefore flaring out a bit. So I cut down the card and retaped it with some duct tape, as you can see here. I then added more duct tape all over the dress form to make it as smooth as possible before I decoupage. I tried to put the tape over any creases and dimples. Basically, you just want to neaten up your dress form as much as you can. All this extra tape makes the dress form more robust as well. I then added some PVA sealer all over the dress form. 
The reason I did this was to add a base for the decoupage and add a bit of texture for the decoupage to grip onto. I was a bit worried about decoupaging straight onto the duct tape, but to be honest, I don't think the PVA sealer made any difference. So this is a completely optional step. And of course, the next step is to decoupage. To do this, I used some furniture gloss by Mod Podge and I used the majority of the tub. I used a cheap paintbrush and some vintage sewing pattern paper. Okay, so how do you decoupage? Well, first you need to rip the paper into small pieces. I would say no bigger than about eight centimeters long and maybe use smaller pieces on the curved areas. Then you simply apply glue to a small area of the dress form Stick a piece of the paper on top and then spread a thin layer of glue on top of the paper as well. You keep adding paper in as many layers as you need to cover up the duct tape and then you let it dry completely. I have to warn you that this takes many hours and you'll be doing this step hundreds of times. I bought four patterns and the first one that I picked to use was a completely different colour and I just didn't realise. This led to me accidentally making a two-tone dress form. So always check the colour of the paper before you begin. If you have different colours then I suggest doing a single layer all over with the darkest paper. Then use the next darkest paper and basically use the papers from darkest to lightest. The idea is to make the decoupage as even as you can all over. The other piece of advice is to maybe do a base layer of plain paper beneath the sewing paper. This is because the sewing pattern paper is so thin that it's very see-through. So you have to do a lot of layers to block out the colour of the duct tape. I personally ended up using three sewing patterns to cover my dress form and I used three to four layers. I left the neck and armholes a plain colour so that there was some contrast between those areas and the rest of the form. And that's it, that's your dress form completed. I really hope you've enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.